Welcome to the third unit of this week. Now we have three complex data types, lists, tuples and dictionaries. So when should we use what? What are the use cases to say, I'd better now take a tuple rather than a list? Theoretically, all these data types are interchangeable. All of them are able to handle several single data types within lists, a tuple or a dictionary. However, each data structure has certain advantages and disadvantages which makes it more well which makes it better suited in certain use cases. We recommend to use lists when you have lots of objects of the same type. For example, lots of integers or lots of cars or lots of students. Then basically all these objects have the same data type and you can make use of it by simply knowing what kind of data type is available in the list. Tuples are immutable, they are not changeable. This looks like a disadvantage in the first place. However, there is a situation where you do not want people to change something. Where you, for example, argue in our university each student from a data type has the same structure. Yeah? He or she has a first name, he has a name, he has an email address and a course of study he is in. And you do not want to add some information because simply that's the structure you are um, giving us granted. <clears throat> because that's simply the structure which is used for everybody. Dictionary are good when you have a key, when you have an ID. Yeah? Sometimes uh, objects like a car or a student with a student ID or a count, a count number simply do have a key. And you do want to access these objects by using the key rather than by using the index. Then dictionary should be used. Of course, combination of these types are very useful. So for example, one pattern which could be useful is a list of tuples. For example, when you have a list of students, all students do have the same data type. You take a tuple and you have many students, you take the list in here. Of course, you could take a dictionary of students as well. Maybe it would be better to use this student ID as a key to have access to the data which belongs to certain students. Showtime. Let's jump into our notebooks and see how it really works. Again, lists should be used for many objects. Take, for example, the following code. You see we have a list of integers. And as we know it is integers, all are integers, we can say we print out not only the object, the number, however we first make an integer division. We divide it by two. Yeah, as we know it's integer, it works. If there would be a string, you would run into a problem. So if we limit ourselves to data of one type, we can make use of it in our program and we do not run into an error because suddenly some unexpected data type pops up. As argued before, tuples are very well suited for creating complex objects. Let's have a look on our students. Now we have student 1, Dylan, Bob uh, with a student ID and a, a course of study. And you right, directly see first the data type is different, it changes, we have string, a string, an integer and again the string. However, even the strings are different because it's first a second name, then a first name, a student ID and a course of study. Each student is created in the same way. Yeah? So what is a good pattern in here? If we have our student 1, 2 and 3, we can compose a list of students out of it, as is done in here. And what you can then see is, we go through this list, we just 
focus on this course of studies, meaning our element with the index 3 and print out what the st um, students are studying. And as each student is composed in the same way, using our tuple, we can easily um, see that's always it's this course of study is on index four, index three. If there is an ID, maybe a dictionary is preferable because then you cannot access, you do not have to access uh, any longer through the index. You can now access the uh, elements by ID. So take the same example as before. You can see now we have reduced our students to just, to just three elements. The student ID we take later on as a key. Yeah? So here we first define an empty dictionary and then we put in our same students as before. Yeah? But you see the index, sorry, the student ID which has been just one element in the tuple. This student ID now gets this key, the key and the tuple is limited to just three elements. And if again we go through this um, dictionary, you can now see uh, this uh, key, the student ID and the course of study. Sometimes Complex offers objects do differ in their attributes. So, for example, uh, if you have different students, then it might be that uh, all of them have a name and have a second name and maybe an email address. But depending on what they are studying, they have different courses and maybe different marks. So what you can see in here is students becoming more complex. Uh, you see we have Dylan, Bob with a student ID and his course of study. But here you then see we add one more dictionary where it states, okay, in this unit logic, in the module logic, Bob Dylan gained an A, in ethics he just got a B. Yeah? And Kurt Cobain studying mechanical engineering just had one course math, which is a different course compared to what Bob Dylan has done and earned a B and so on and so on. And uh, of course, you can print it out. Yeah? So what we have in here is a list of students. However, this uh, data has been partially transformed into a dictionary because um, the, the, depending on what they are studying, there are slight changes in the modules or units they have taken. These use cases are just recommendations. There is no proof that this is the best way to do it. However, we recommend to carefully think what is the best data type to take in which situation. Let's go through the exercises. If you want to, just stop the video for a while and try to, to implement these exercises by yourself. And then you can follow up and see how our example solution looks like. First exercise. We start with our list of students. You can again see we have a student. Each student is composed in the same way with a second name, a first name, a student ID, uh, email and a preferred class um, the student uh, is in. So our first task shall be to add one more student to our list by um, getting the input through um, the input function. So we have first have to ask for all these elements, create one new student out of it and append it to the list. And finally, we should go with a for loop through the list and see um, and, and print out the result. So let's first get the input to a new student. So um, name equals to input. So we do get a string as an input. We don't have to change something in here. Um, name, I make it not too polite, just to be a little bit quicker. Um, first name 
equals to input first name. Then we have the student ID equals to, now we have to make a conversion into integer, input student ID. Um, we would like to have an email. Um, and finally, the um, the class you pr uh, you would like in, to be in. Our oh, class is not that good. Um, let's say take module equals to input. So now we have after running um, this uh, after executing this cell, we have all these values. We now have to pack them together into a tuple. Student equals to name, first name, student ID, email, and module. And then we have to append it to our list. So what we can say is list of students, append our student. And finally, with a for loop, we would like to go through this loop and print each student out. So for student in list of students, print student. Now I hope I do not have a typo, so let's check what it, if it works. Name, so we take this for famous riddle, Tom, now he's getting his double six 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 as a trip, double triple six as an ID. His email would be tr at Hogwarts. dot with and his uh, class again preferred module is of course defense against the dark arts so what we can see here we have now a new member in our class Tom Riddle um, the structure is as before and we could make use of it, sim or we have simply we have simply guaranteed by the structure of our program that the structure for a student is still as before. So, second exercise again, you can stop your video and try to first solve this by yourself, um, and later on check the example solution. So the idea of the second exercise is to transform the above lists of tuples into a dictionary of tuples by simply taking the ID as the key for our dictionary. Okay, what do we have to do? So what we can do is first say we have a dict of students which is an empty dictionary right at the beginning. And then we, with a for loop, go through our list yeah, for student in list of students. And we have to create, let's say, some new student um, by composing it out of the um, information we have gained uh, in here. So we can simply take um, the values from above and simply skip the one we do not need. So we have student zero, uh, index zero, student with an index one. This is um, name and first name. We skip the two 
because this idea we would like take like, take her on, and instead we take student three and student four, and then we add this uh, new st student to our dictionary of students and take the uh, index two as a key. So dict of student, uh, here we now take student and the number two, that's our student ID, equal to, to new student. And finally, we run through this uh, dictionary for um, st student ID and dict of student print student ID comma dict of student with exactly this student ID. So we have a name error. New student is not defined. Okay, we have uh, of course to put this equal sign in here. Um, dict of students should be as we have a um, plural, then of course have to do the same in here. Ah, come on. But now it works. So what you can see, we do have our student ID in the very beginning and we have the reduced student without the student ID in this tuple. So our last exercise is about transforming this dictionary of tuples into a dictionary of dictionaries. So what we have to do is we, with one for loop, are going through this um, dictionary. And then we take each of these elements of this tuple and bring it into a new dictionary. For each student, we have one dictionary and assign these values to um, to keys. Okay, let's do it. For student ID indict of students. Uh, we say we assign a new value to this key. Yeah. And namely, this should be a new dictionary where we say the name is a key and the value is dict of students. So the value we do have in our um, dictionary of students with the current student ID as a key. And here um, the index number zero. Yeah, so we are looking um, on, for example, Potter, assign it to the name. Now this becomes a little bit typo and I can make my life a little bit more easy. If I say um, first name, sorry, first name and make some copy paste copy paste but of course I have to change the index in here yeah so the first name is of course the one with the index one yeah. and then we come to email which has index number two and finally we have let's say our preferred Oh, some quotation mark is missing. And finally, we do have module this 
sorry. And we enter that in here and use index number three. So now everything is changed. What we of course have to check if it really worked. So again, let's go through our dict. And now print out our result, which would be stud ID and then dict of stud. with our student ID. So what you can see now is compared to the result above, here we have our student ID and the value is a tuple. And here we have our student ID and the value is uh, a dictionary. However, I see that uh, we have faced problems that each one got assigned to the same number, which of course is not correct. Okay, what I have to do in here is to say SID. So what you have here is the final result um, that uh, all student IDs um, get now assigned to a value which is a dictionary. So you can see name has a value Potter, first name has a value Harry and so on and so on. What have you learned in these units? Actually, there are certain use cases where the one or the other complex data type, namely list, tuple, dictionary, is preferable.